Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Zion Lutheran this morning. I hope everyone's doing well today. Another beautiful day that the Lord has made for us. I'm looking out here. Are, do we have any first-time visitors with us this morning? Nope. Can't see that. All right. Anyone have an announcement? Any news for us this morning? Myra. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, Good morning. You notice how beautiful uh, the pews look. Uh, the Pittmans, Sharon and Fritz, have uh, purchased these Leland Evergreen, if I get that right. Uh, they're for the taking. Um, but for today, after the service, we have a bunch in the back. So as you leave, take them with you. This is their gift to the church. Uh, but everything just looks beautiful with it. It's got all decorated for Christmas. So please, before you leave, take one home. You can pot them for the first year, and after the first year, if they grow, then you can plant them in the ground. So enjoy. Thank you, Myra. Anyone else have any? Alicia? There are parsonage pecans sitting on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Take the bag, and you can, if you would like to contribute to free will offering, just put it in the pot box. Yeah, that'll go to the food pantry. Yes. You know, they come from the little backyard. That's the best tree we have. And it will be watered all the time. Yeah. It's the only green portion of the church property right now. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, anyone else? Nope. Okay, so please note in the last page or two of the bulletin and the yellow insert has news about what's going on, who's doing what, uh, who you can pray for, so take note of that. Yes, please. Yeah. Oh, I have one other thing. Yes. We have, uh, I'll pass this around. It's a sign-up sheet where you can sign up to be an assistant minister. You can do this. An acolyte, an assistant usher, or a head usher. So we'll start this. Okay. Good morning, everyone. A hearty welcome to all, a special welcome to our guests worshiping with us today, and also those coming to us by Facebook Live this morning. Good morning, world. All right. We, uh, we have the... Uh, 2021 Zion calendars that, that the bank, uh, uh, Casterville State Bank provides uh, with, with our contact information and everything on. So please take one or two with you and uh, give one to a friend. We've got plenty of them. And uh, so those will be at, at both entrances or exits to the church this morning. Also too, uh, I do want to announce, hold on just a minute here. Yeah, I forgot right here. Uh, the door offerings that we had for Mary Lopez and family whose house burned down. Uh, we're not finished counting the money. I'm going to put that out this week. Uh, but Zion came through very, very well. We also, too, took $500 from the Benevolence Fund and, and put that in with the offerings. But uh, I have a feeling it's going to come well over $2,000 that's going to go to the Lopez family. And we'll get that, uh, we'll get that reported in, in the uh, email this coming week. Also, too, now, I'd like to uh, like to get Susanna up here, please. You can come up. We have a special presentation this morning to the Medina County Food Pantry. And, uh, and she also, but we'd like to recognize all the people that have been helping out. Susanna would like to do that right now. So let me give you, uh, let me give you a mic here, Susanna. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. I just want to, first of all, thank everyone in the church for all your contributions, your donations, everything you've done for the pantry. And as you know, we haven't had our um, ribbon opening or anything because of the pandemic. But as soon as we do have something, we'll definitely invite everyone. And hopefully it'll be sometime in 2021. We don't know when, whenever all of this gets over and done with. But I also want to thank... Um, those of you that have really helped and come and, and fix boxes and help deliver the food to the pantry, 
Dortha and Eddie McDaniel, if y'all could come up. Uh, Phyllis Sandhoven, Debbie Jones, Cindy Stenson, Carol Mango, Alicia and Pastor Knippa, Ruth and Ken Felty, Pat Davila, Gay Belcher, myself, and then Wayne would help us too. <laughs> Wayne did, yes. Yeah. He's, he's, he's with us up there. He's got the best seat in the house. <laughs> uh, yeah, come on up here. So thank you so much, everyone. For and to the Medina County Food Pantry at Leiter on behalf of the congregation, we took door offerings through October and November. And uh, I know we also took regular, about what was the poundage of the food that we collected? Oh, here? that's right. In, uh, in October, we had 418 pounds, November 150, and then a total of 568 pounds. So that's... Wonderful that job, helped, Zion. That helped a lot to package the, the Thanksgiving and the December Christmas boxes, which we did over 200 on Friday. We had a distribution on Friday, and we probably had over 200 at the pantry that we gave turkeys and or ham and we did all the fixings. So everything was helped here. Well, through, through October and November, we also had door offerings going on every Sunday. And uh, it, with, with the addition of the $500 from the Zion Benevolence Fund, uh, on behalf of Zion Lutheran Church, we're very happy to provide the food pantry this year is $1,934. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, okay. everyone. This, and, this uh, comes from all of y'all. Did, did somebody get a picture? Myra, did you get a picture of this? Yes, all right. Wonderful. <laughs> Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you very much. And God's blessings for the food pantry and you too, Susanna. All right. One other thing this morning. You probably noticed up there, we've had them up before, but we did not have the opportunity to dedicate them yet. So this morning, if you look to the left and the right, these are the Advent banners that were made uh, by several of our ladies. Uh, Judy, uh, Susanna was a part of it. Myra, you were part of it. Uh, was there anybody else that helped? Okay, all right. But uh, I'm gonna give those ladies a hand for the wonderful jobs that they're doing <laughs> our banners. And I'd like to dedicate these banners to the glory of the Lord this morning. We thank you, God, for the efforts and the dedication of those who made these Advent banners. And we pray God's blessings on these banners that are in use here in our church. May, they, may these continue to remind us of the rich history and tradition that Zion Lutheran Church has been built on. And we receive these banners as a sacred trust and will use them with reverence and with respect. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we dedicate these banners to the glory of God. Let's pray. Loving and gracious God, grant us your blessing as we consecrate this gift of banners to your glory, that they may be an enduring witness before all of your people and that our lives may be consecrated to your service. We pray this in the name of the risen Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, and please take time to thank those ladies for the job, wonderful job that they do do. All right, with that, please stand as you're able, and we'll have our gathering song in just a little bit, but we need a request, please. A request for our opening hymn, it's Christmas song and Advent song, please. Anybody, as our bell rings. <laughs> We're going to leave it to the organist this morning for the first day. Oh, oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. There you go. What number is that? Okay. 34. 34. There you go.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We are the treasured people of the Lord. We teach them to our children. We talk about them at home and when we are away, when we lie down and when we rise. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The prayer of the day. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. Pray, send to my Free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The lighting of the Advent wreath. We praise you, O God, for this wheel of time that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, open up our eyes to see your presence in the lowly ones of this earth. Enlighten us with your grace that we may sing of your advent among us in the word made flesh. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Amen. We sing all the verses of light one candle. As the, as the candles are lit. first reading for today is from the seventh chapter of 2 Samuel, beginning with the first verse. Now when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, 
like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you the rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The second reading for this morning is from uh, the 16th chapter of Romans, beginning with the 25th verse. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed, and though the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith, to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. Here ends the readings. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation and the reading of the gospel. God's word is our great heritage and shall be ours forever. To spread its light from age to age shall be our chief Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter, beginning with the 26th verse. Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I'm a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. We want to invite Garden Granny and our children up here, please. Let's, let's uh, Let's get Garden Granny's chair. Come on up, children. Who are you, children? No boys? Ah, here comes a boy. No, that's a girl. <laughs> Good morning, how are y'all today? Good children. Happy Valentine's. Christmas. 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 Christmas.
Oh, okay. Oh, this is Christmas. Yeah. So, what do y'all think of when you think of Christmas? Christmas trees and what? Okay. John? You think of God? Me too. What do y'all think of? What? Jesus? Hey, we're getting some good answers. Yes, we sure are. Hey, that's what I want to talk to y'all about this morning. Um, you know, I knew that Christmas is coming Thursday, right? It's coming Thursday. So last night I didn't sleep really good because I kept thinking, what do I want to talk about this morning? And there's so many beautiful, wonderful things to tell about the Christmas story. But I want to talk to you about one thing this morning. It just, it just came to me. Uh, can I read you something out of this Bible? Okay. Yeah. Hold on just a second here. I want to read What you. do you call that, Granny? What you got the there? The Word. The Word of God. The true yeah, Word of God. The true Word of God, yes. Um, I want to talk to you about the humility of Jesus. Humility is the word, it means humble. You know what humble means, Ryan? If you're not proud and stuck up and think you're the big dude, you think of yourself just lowly, lowly. You don't put on airs or pretend to be something that you're not, okay? I want to read you something from the Word of God. It's from the book of Philippians. And the Apostle Paul was writing to the church at Philippi. And I just want to read you a thing before. It says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. There's that word. I want y'all to remember that word humble. Thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. Okay? You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Although he was God, now one day we're going to have a whole lesson on the Trinity. It's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So Jesus was always with God. He was God's Son. Although he was God's Son, he did not think of being equal with God as something to, to cling to, okay? Instead, he gave up his divine privileges as being God. He was with the Father in heaven, okay? He took the humble position of a slave. Humble. That's the word for this morning. Humble. When he appeared in human form, see, he was God when he became a baby and took on human flesh. He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Just think, children. The king of the universe was born in a barn. It says stable, but a stable is nothing but a barn. And when we see pictures of the nativity, we are getting a sanitized version of the nativity. Church, it was a barn. Animals live in a barn. Animals are smelly, and they do smelly things. It was not a clean, sanitized place. The king of the universe was born in a barn. As a baby, he took on human flesh, just like we do. So he would know how we feel. So it, so you hurt yourself or something, and you go to pray and you say, oh Jesus, I hurt myself, could you please help heal me? Heal my finger, I hurt it so bad. Jesus knows what it feels like to hurt a finger because he became a person just like we are. And then he died a criminal's death on a wicked, wicked cross. The Romans who ruled the world at that time invented crucifixion. Crucifixion is the cross, okay? Stick this way and stick this way. It was the most cruel, inhumane form of punishment, and it was for criminals. Criminals were executed by hanging on a cross, and Jesus was hung on a cross and died for whose sins? Uh, our our sins. sins. Yes, everyone's uh, sin, uh, yes. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son to die for our sins. Humble, humble. He, Jesus could have, I keep thinking, what's the fanciest hotel in the world? The Hilton? Yeah, something like that, or a walled off Astoria, or. The, universe, yeah, the King yeah. of the Universe was born in a stable. Let's just thank God for, for Jesus, for just for a minute. 
Father, we are surrounded by lights and gifts and all kinds of beautiful things at Christmas, but let us not forget, Father, that it was your son that we celebrate his birth at this time of year. Let us not forget that, Lord, in all the, the happiness and the celebration for Christmas. They're not bad, Lord. We're celebrating. But let us not get our eyes off of that baby in the cradle who is the king of the world. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay, so now, so up here, this is a goodies. Children, God's blessings for you, and have a very blessed Christmas. Garden Granny, you know, my, my wife has this towel in the kitchen and said if, they, if three wise women had visited Jesus instead of three wise, wise men, they would have cleaned the barn. <laughs> Thank you so much, Garden Granny. God bless you, children. Would you please fold your hands and bow your heads as I pray? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Advent is all about darkness and light. One of my favorite light and dark illustrations in fact, is that, and I think I've told this from this book before, but is visiting caverns, when you go into that cavern and you reach the bottom of it, they always turn off the lights when you get there. And your eyes try to adjust to the pitch blackness and the darkness, but try as you want to, you cannot see anything. There has to be at least a little bit of light or nothing can be seen. You literally can't see the hand that is right in front of your face. It's that dark. Would you pray with me, please? Lord Jesus, light of the world, enlighten our hearts today and always. Show us your will and strengthen us with power in our inmost being so that we may do your will here on earth as it is done in heaven, where you dwell with your Father and the Holy Spirit forever one God. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you once again and always. You know, some people out there choose to live in darkness, dwelling for years in caves deep underground and never coming out to see the light, or very seldom. People don't even know that they're there. And sometimes they come close as they explore a cave, but those people choose to stay hidden in the darkness. Now suppose that if we knew for certain that those people were in there, we could assemble a search team and we could find them. But they don't want to be found. They like the dark. Everything looks better to them that way. They're dirty. They don't know it. They don't have, they don't have, to have the ability to read, therefore to learn. The outside world is purposefully, is purposely put out of sight for them. No, people have been stumbling around in darkness for a very, very long time. Now, I'm not talking here about these cave dwellers either anymore. The world is filled with top dwellers who stumble about in darkness of their own choosing. They choose not to see the light because they have determined to not hear the word of God. This is, after all, it is where the light shines, in the Word of God. That is where the hidden mysteries of life are unveiled. And it happens in the Scriptures. We heard about it today in Romans. The revealing of the mystery that has been kept secret and silent for so many long ages has been now unveiled and revealed and disclosed. and It's been brought to light. How? the prophetic writings. And how is one strengthened in this revelation? Through the reading, the preaching, and the hearing of God's word. That's it. There's no other way. Now, you may decide that going to a university is the answer, and that you'll get all the revelations of light that one could ever need in their life. 
The university is a grand thing, and it's changed, it's changed life. Many, it's changed my life. It's changed my son's lives. Changed, changed my wife's life. But knowledge cannot strengthen you in the inner being. And nor can math or history or science or language bring you to faith, let alone the obedience of faith. <coughs> scripture does that. Sola Scriptura was the, as the reformer said, the written and the preached word alone brings us to faith and obedience. And only God's word pulls back the darkness and shows us the true light that is himself. We cannot find this great light on our own, nor will do the universities disclose it. The walk is a, in a in, they walk in desperate darkness, leading others into the deep caverns, and we simply cannot find the light on our own, and left to our own devices, we will proudly call the darkness light and stumble about proudly in this world and through life, faithless and hopeless without that word. In ages past, even the angels did not comprehend the mystery of the ages. These beings who lived with God in inapproachable, inapproachable light did not see the light. They did not understand the mystery and better than someone who thinks that amassing all this knowledge and book learning or doing fine deeds is the way to God and it's not. Paul says to you, to the Ephesians, that it was God's plan to make plain what was undiscoverable for ages in antiquity, to bring to light what is the plan of the hidden mystery of, for, for the ages in God, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9. This is the love of Christ that surpasses human knowledge and all human understanding. Instead of being filled with facts and histories and philosophies, we are filled with the fullness of God himself, as Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19 talks about. This is the revelation, that God in Christ fills us with light, where there had only been darkness before. The light that fills us with himself is what is given to us. And he does it through the preaching and the teaching and the hearing of his word. And there is no other way. And if we think that there is a chance at heaven because we are nice people, might be fairly good looking and well to do or American or anything other than Christ alone, then we stumble. We stumble in darkness, the darkness of our own making. We can't see our hands before our faces even. We don't know how dirty we really are. We are cut off from God and there's no way out of this darkness unless someone shines the light of the world into that darkness. And the light is shown through the word from the one true, true God because it is a revelation, a revealed word from God, not human knowledge or wisdom, no. We cannot work it out on our own and come to a knowledge of the truth. No administration, no Congress, no court, nobody else can reveal this. The one true God had to reveal it to us. And the truth is that the light who the, light who the bottom dwellers are afraid of, the truth is that the light of the world whom the Father sent to bring us out of deep darkness into his marvelous light, is what does it. And I urge you, I urge you knowing that the light is unveiled through the word alone to read your Bible regularly. And if you have an extra Bible, share it with someone, someone else who, who could use one or even asks you for one. Talk, it, talk about them through, about it through the, throughout the year and share with them what God is bringing to light in your life and the joy that you have because of it and then pray for them. Pray for them that they may be strengthened according to the gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. And now to him who is able to establish you according to his gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, 
according to the revelation of the mystery that has been kept silence through, time, through times eternal, but now is unveiled. And by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the eternal God, is made known to all nations for their obedience to faith, to the one and only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory now and forever. Amen? Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in faith in Christ Jesus, always. Amen. Let's stand to sing. Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. In the mercy Almighty, of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the word and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
The prayers of the church begin on page 9 of your worship handout. God of power and might, fulfill your promise and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, Heavenly Father. With our, our mouths, mouths we, we will proclaim, proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. generations. As we near the celebration of the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, we stand in awesome wonder of your mysterious power and unapproachable wisdom for revealing to us your plans for our salvation conceived in the womb of eternity, announced by your prophets and brought forth in the fullness of time. We praise and glorify your most holy name. Only by faith in you as the only wise God can we recognize the great miracle that you performed in your handmaiden, the Virgin Mary. What you have done is above all human understanding. When our reasons doubt that your love and mercy could accomplish this, forgive, forgive us, us, O Lord, Lord, for becoming impatient as you drive us to your word to search out your prophecies regarding the unfolding of your plan. We, we ask, ask for your forgiveness. forgiveness. As you sent your Holy Spirit to inspire the prophets and the evangelists to speak and write your word, so send your Holy Spirit to us that we may truly believe your truth. May your Spirit help us to believe what our reason cannot comprehend. Fill our hearts with such joy that others may recognize these gifts as coming from you through our Lord Jesus Christ. Gracious Heavenly Father, we lift before you all the requests that we have listed today in our bulletin, and those also, too, that we hold in our hearts right now as we observe a moment of silence to lift those personally. Lord, in your mercy. Lord. Gracious Heavenly Father, the land is parched, it's dry, we're in a drought. We pray that you would send your life-giving rains to this and to all areas in need, so that the earth is watered and the crops come up and the grass grows once again. Lord, in your mercy. Lord. Gracious Lord, we lift up to you these requests also that have been put before us. For Judy Weiblin, who is suffering with, with MS right now and its effects, Lord, just be with Judy during this time. Be with her medical team, her doctors, her nurses. Give them the, the, the knowledge and the wisdom they need to bring her help and to, and to get rid of this, this suffering that she's going through right now, Lord. And be with Judy's family also, too, as they help her. Lord, in your mercy. For Felix Davila and family, Felix lost his wife, Cynthia, to COVID. Gracious Lord, we just be, ask you that you be with Cynthia's family and with, especially with Phoenix, with Felix during this time loss. Comfort them with your presence, your love, and your grace, Lord. Give them a sense of your, of, of your, of your mercy, Lord, and just remind them of all the good that, that Cynthia brought that family and of that wonderful reunion in heaven that we'll all experience someday with all of our loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Since you are not, are not willing that we should perish, Lord, bless our world with peace so that your saving message will not be hindered. Amen. Amen. And we pray that perfect prayer that our Lord taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. 
And after he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had supped and given thanks, he gave it to them and he said, drink of it, all of you. This is the cup of the New Testament given and shed for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated. Assistants will come forward, we'll communion you first, and then we'll open up as we'll do continuous communion as we have been Sunday after Sunday. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that is freely given. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ freely given and shed for you. Go and please serve the Lord with gladness. Come to the Lord's table. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, freely given for you. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of Christ, freely given.
Lord's table. Thank you. And take and eat the true body of Christ freely given for you. Blessing for you. I'll come back to Lord. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of Christ freely given. that is freely given for you to go in peace. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of Christ freely given for you to go in peace. special children. Jesus loves you dearly. Amen. Take and eat the true body of Christ freely given for your peace. John, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of Christ freely given for your peace. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat true body of Christ freely given for you. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of Christ that is freely given for you. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of Christ freely given for you. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that is freely given for you. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat the true body of Christ freely given for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ freely given for you. And he take and eat the true body of Christ freely given for the Lord. Yes. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that is freely given for you. Yes. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and meet the true body of Christ freely given for you. May the Lord bless you and keep you as his special children. Jesus loves you dearly. Amen. Take and meet. This is the true body of Christ that is freely given for you. is the true body of Christ freely given for you. Go in peace.
Please stand as you're able. And now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast and true faith unto life everlasting. Depart now in joy and in peace. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set for us a banquet. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. Okay, we need a Christmas hymn if possible. Somebody has a has a request, please. Fifty-four. Fifty-four? Okay, in the green, green hymnal. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. And all God's people say, Amen. We sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures Thursday evening at 7 p.m. for our 
for our Christmas Eve candlelight service. We leave now to serve him who first served us. And all of God's people boldly say, Amen. Amen. Amen.